click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Welcome to QuickBooks 2021. My name is Cindy. We're actually working through module four right now where we're talking about customers and jobs. One of the things you have the ability to do in QuickBooks is create estimates for your customers. Think of an estimate as a quote for a job. You can create estimates that actually turn into invoices when you're ready to actually collect some money from your customer. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I'll show you how to get started creating estimates in QuickBooks. When you're estimating a job, you'll want to click on this icon here. If you do not have this, it's because you told QuickBooks you do not estimate jobs. Let me go back and show you where to turn that on if you don't see that option. If you go back to Edit and then go down to Preferences, you're going to see an option on the left that actually says Jobs and Estimates. Click on the Company Preferences tab and here's where you can say yes, that you want to create estimates. And keep in mind that if you estimate jobs, you probably do want progress invoicing as well. So make sure this one is on. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click on Estimates. The first thing QuickBooks wants you to do is tell it which customer and job you'd like to create an estimate for. You can either start typing the customer's last name in the list, or you can pick it from the drop down. When you're using the job feature, always, always, always choose the job and not the main customer. If you choose the main customer and you start running reports, they will say other, and you really won't know which job a transaction applies to. I'm going to click on Kitchen Remodel. Now, while I'm here, let me just show you something. If you wanted to set up a new customer that's not already in the list, or a job that's not in the list, you don't have to get out of this window and go back to the customer center to set them up. You can do it right from here. Let's say I do want Tom Allen, but let's say it's another job I'm creating an estimate for. Maybe it's a sunroom. I want you to notice that I deleted the kitchen remodel and I've got my customer name and there's a colon at the end. The colon separates the levels. Now if I type sunroom and then hit the tab key to leave the field, it will tell me that Sunroom is not in the customer list and it will ask me if I want to set it up. I always quick add jobs because the information is already in there as far as the customer itself is concerned. If it's a new customer, you can go through and set it up and put all the customer information in if you want to do that. The other thing is you can't add two levels at the same time. I couldn't type Allen, Tom colon Sunroom. I have to put in Tom Allen first, Go ahead and set that up, then go back into the sunroom. I'm going to quick add it. And now you'll notice if I drop the list down, I've got two jobs underneath Tom Allen. The next thing you'll notice is the field that says class. If you're using the class feature in QuickBooks, make sure you always, always, always choose a class or your reports will not be accurate. I'm going to go ahead and choose remodel. And the next thing you'll see is QuickBooks wants to know which template you'd like to use for your estimate. Now we're going to cover templates in a later module, but a template basically allows you to change the columns. If you want one to the right or left of another, add some fields. Maybe you want your logo, things like that. You can customize any of your forms in QuickBooks and then choose the template you want for each transaction. I'm just going to leave it on custom estimate for now. The next thing you'll notice is that it has the current date. If you'd like to change that date, you can change it to any date you'd like. And then it has the estimate number. Anything that's numbered in QuickBooks will start with the number one and the next transaction will have the next number. If you want this to have a specific number, you can type in, you can type in whatever number you want. And if you're using a lettering system or something like that, you can also go ahead and put that in. QuickBooks will number the next one 619 in a case like this. You'll see that QuickBooks pulled in the name and address that you set up when you set up your customer. If you see something that needs to be changed, then go ahead and make that change here. And what will happen is once you save and close this at the bottom, it will ask you, would you like to make that change permanent? And it will change it in their record if you say yes. If you're going to have some of these items on this estimate shipped to a different location, then you can come over here and add new and choose that option to create a new ship to address. The next thing you'll notice is that you need to come down to the bottom and choose an item. 
If you click on the first line, you'll see there's a drop down arrow and you can actually choose your item from the list. Now your items are the things that you're selling your customer. Your item might be a service you provide, it might be a physical product. You can choose as many items as you want from this drop down. I'm going to choose framing. And in the description area, if you wanted to elaborate on this, you can type all day long, this will word wrap. You can also put in the quantity. If it's framing, it's something we probably charge by the hour. I'll put 10 in here. And then it brought in a cost of $55. And that's because when the item called framing was set up, it was set up at $55 for one. You can change that if you want. If you want to make this 50, for example, you'll see now it's calculated 10 times 50 to give you an amount of 500 and also a total of 500. Now let me explain what the unit of measurement is in this column. If you have something you sell by the foot, the yard, by the case, you can create a drop down list It's called a unit of measurement and then you can choose from that list. The reason it's not available now is because it wasn't set up in the item itself. There's also a markup column. If you want to mark an item up, you can mark it up a dollar amount or a percentage. I'm going to mark this one up 30%. You have to put the percent sign there or it won't know to do the percentage. Notice when I tab over that it's calculated the total. The customer will not see this markup column. When we're finished, I'm going to show you a preview of what this looks like so you can mark things up any way you like. The last column that you see is where you tell QuickBooks if the item itself is taxable or not. Now this one brought in the non-taxable sales option because it was set up in the item setup, but you could change it here if you needed to. I'm going to put one more in. Notice I'm just clicking on the next line, and this time I want to put in a physical product. Let's say that we're going to estimate some wood doors. I just typed WO because I knew that was in the list. And because I have sub items underneath, interior and exterior, I want to choose the appropriate one and we'll just say exterior. And I'll sell two of these and I'll just leave the price that's in there. Now you'll notice this time there is a markup of negative 79%. And the reason that is in there is because when you set up an item, you can tell QuickBooks how much you typically buy it for and how much you typically sell it for. And if both of those fields are filled in, it will assume this markup. But we're going to type over that. I'm going to put in $1,000 and you can see it did the calculation for me. And I can go on and on and on and put in as many lines as I want. This is not the bottom. It will just keep on going. Now that we have a few things in here, let's look at some other things that we see on our screen here. On the bottom left, there's a place for a customer message. These are things like all the work has been complete, please sign and remit. And if you don't like any of these in this list, go ahead and create your own by clicking on add new. There's also a place for a memo down here at the bottom. The customer will not see that memo. That's just something for you to see. Over on the right, we see the subtotal, the total of the markup, the total of the sales tax, and then the grand total. Over on the right, you'll see a section that will just give you some information about your customer. You can see things like what their open balance might be, if they have any other active estimates, recent transactions, and notes. If you don't want to see this area, you can actually hide it right up here with this arrow. And if you ever want to show it again, you can use the show history as it's called and show it again. When it's hidden, you have a little bit more room on your screen to work with. Let's go ahead and stop the video here. I want to go ahead and take you over to part two. And in part two, we're going to go through all of these tabs up here so that you'll know some of the other options you have when you're creating estimates. Hey there, it's Cindy. Welcome back to QuickBooks 2021. We're actually walking through module four right now where we're talking about customers and jobs. We started talking about estimates in the previous video, which is part one. Let's go ahead and finish up estimates in QuickBooks. Let's go ahead and look at the tabs at the top of this estimate. The first tab is the main tab. And honestly, most of the options that you'll use on the estimate will probably be under this one. The first thing you'll notice is there's an option to search or find and something within an estimate in QuickBooks. For example, if you're just wanting to look at the next or previous estimate, 
You can use these arrows here to go backwards or forwards. Keep in mind that everything in QuickBooks is in date order. If you previously entered one and you had backdated it, for example, then it would not be the previous one. Let's say you're using these arrows and you're searching for an estimate, but you just can't find the one you're looking for. You can click on this Find option here, and you can put in some criteria to help QuickBooks search. You can tell QuickBooks you want to search by customer or job. You can search for a date range, an estimate number, or an amount of money. And once you put in the criteria, just click on Find, and it will search for you. This is only going to look through estimates. It's not going to search QuickBooks for anything specific. The next button you see is the New button. This New is the exact same thing as if you came down to the bottom here and clicked on Save and New. Save and New would actually save this estimate and put you on a new blank one. The next one is your Save option at the top. If you're working on something that's taken a while and you just want to make sure you don't lose what you've already put in, you can go ahead and just hit the Save button. Notice you can also save this, if you want, as a PDF. The next thing you're going to see is the Delete button. This is how you're going to delete this estimate. You'll also see one that says Create a Copy. And what Create a Copy means is what if you need another estimate just like this one, except maybe you need to change one of the items, for example. You can actually create a copy of this one and then make whatever changes you want and then save that one and you'll have the original and the copy. Now we are going to talk about Memorize in a later module, but let me just tell you real quick, if this is a transaction, in this case an estimate, that you want to appear on a regular basis in QuickBooks, you can go ahead and memorize it. A good example of this is not really an estimate, but more of a car payment. It's a really good example because with a car payment, you know it's going to happen the same time every month, and you want QuickBooks to go ahead and enter that transaction for you. The next one says Mark as inactive. Now what this allows you to do is, let's say that you don't want this estimate to be an active estimate anymore. You can actually have QuickBooks show it as inactive, meaning it will not show up unless you run specific reports. And if you ever want to activate it again, you could go back and do that. Here's your print option. I want to go ahead and click on preview for you because I want to show you something that I talked to you about in part one. One of the things we did in part one was we were able to actually mark up an estimate, a dollar amount or a percentage. And I told you that the customer would not see that column. And you can see that right here. I'll just click to zoom in a little bit. You'll notice the customer just sees the description, so they don't see the item. They see the description, the quantity, the unit of measurement, the cost, and the total. Some other things that you will notice on the estimate, here is the job or the project right here. And you can see it says estimate at the top and it has your estimate number and the date. And down at the bottom you'll see subtotal, sales tax, and total. You do have the ability to customize the way this looks. We'll be talking about that in a later module. I'm going to go ahead and hit close at the top. And the next thing I want to point out is back into print, you can also go ahead and print this estimate, but you can also print an envelope. And this is where a mail merging with Microsoft Word comes in. If you wanted to actually mail this to your customer, it would actually open Microsoft Word and it would pull in the name and address you have over here onto that envelope and then you just print the envelope. You can also save this as a PDF from here. The next option is your email option. I've been talking about the fact that you can email any kind of form in QuickBooks to your customers or vendors, and here's an example right here. If I wanted to email this estimate, then I would click on Estimate right here, and then it would take me to a window that would pull in that template we saw in our preferences, and you could actually go in and edit that before you send it. The other thing I want to point out is the batch right here. If this is checked where it says Email Later, this will allow you to create several different estimates. And when you're ready, you can come back and email the batch right here, meaning all the ones with the check mark. That way you don't have to send them one at a time over to your customer. Here you can attach a file. If there's any kind of file related to this estimate that you want to just have attached here so you can find it more easily, you can do that. You can also create an invoice right from here. 
If your customer has already said, go ahead and send me an invoice, I'll make a payment, you can do that from here, but chances are you're not going to be on this screen when you're ready to actually create an invoice. And let me just mention what Start Project means. In two, it has another software package they can sell you called MavenLink, which is more of the project management side of things. And if you want to try it, they have a 30-day free trial, but you could get started right here. Now let me mention some of the other tabs at the top. You have your formatting tab. Here's again a way to preview your estimate. These options here have to do with customizing this template right here. Here's your spell check. And then there's a way to insert a line, delete a line, and copy a line. The line you're clicked on, if you insert, you'll put one above it. If you delete a line, you'll delete the line you're clicked on. And of course, you can copy a line if you want. Here's some more options for customizing this template. The Send and Ship tab will allow you to do mail merges with Microsoft Word related to estimates. And then you have some reports under the Reports tab. You've got Estimates by Job, you've got Estimate versus Actual, and an Item Price List. This is one you'll run often, this Item Estimate versus Actual, just to see where you are in relation to what you estimated the job to be. You can also run a quick report over here on this particular customer and job and this estimate, and then there's the transaction history. But like I said, most everything you're going to do will be under the main tab, so you'll spend most of your time there. That's a quick overview of the estimate itself and the tabs at the very top here. This video is part of our full QuickBooks 2021 course. Take a look at the course by clicking right over there. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more QuickBooks Pro 2020 videos, go ahead and click over there.